So we've shared a bit of our hearts with one another. Let's take just a moment and quiet our hearts as we come to God in worship. Brothers and sisters, let us open our hearts to the redeeming grace of God in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the aid of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sins, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins in the presence of God and of one another. God, our provider, help, help us. us. It is hard to believe there is enough to share. We question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense to your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you, where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life and lead us for the life of the world. Beloved people of God, in Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown with God's mercy. You are forgiven and loved into the abundant life. Rise now as forgiven people and let us sing together our own name.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you always. And also with you. Today's first reading is from the book of Lamentations, chapter 3, uh, verses 22 and 23. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. 
They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. God. Please stand for the gospel of affirmation. <laughs> According to St. Mark, the fifth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side, a great crowd gathered around him, and he was by the sea. Then one of the leaders of the synagogue, named Jairus, came, and when he saw Jesus, he fell at his feet and begged him repeatedly, My little daughter is at the point of death. Come, and lay your hands on her, so that she may be made well and live. So Jesus went with him. And a large crowd followed him and pressed in on him. Now there was a woman who had been suffering from hemorrhages for twelve years. She had endured much under many physicians, and had spent all that she had, and she was no better grew worse. She had heard about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak. For she said, if I but touch his clothing, I will be made well. Immediately her hemorrhage stopped and she felt in her body that she was healed of her disease. Immediately aware that power had gone forth from him, Jesus turned about in the crowd and said, Who touched my clothes? And his disciples said to him, You see the crowd pressing in on you? How can you say, Who touched me? Jesus looked all around to see who had done it. But the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came in fear and trembling and fell before him and told him the whole truth. Jesus said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. While he was still speaking, some people came from the leader's house to say, Your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? But overhearing what they said, Jesus said to the leader of the synagogue, Do not fear. Only believe. He allowed no one to follow him except for Peter and James and John, the son, uh, the brother of James. And when they came to the house of the leader of the synagogue, he saw a commotion, people weeping and wailing loudly. When he had entered, he said to them, Why do you make a commotion and weep? The child is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him. Then Jesus put them all outside, took the child's father and mother and those who were with him, and went into where the child was. He took her by the hand and said to her, Talitha, come, which means little girl, arise. And immediately the girl got up and began to walk about. She was 12 years of age. At this, they were overcome with amazement. Jesus strictly ordered them that no one should know about this. And he told them to give her something to eat. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Christ is risen! He is risen indeed. I didn't catch you by surprise. <laughs> I thought I might catch you by surprise. Huh? When was Easter this year? Uh, March, uh, what, March 31st? About 12 weeks back. And that's mostly how we think about Easter, huh? A holiday, a special day, a, an exciting celebration with lots of great music. Yet as true as that is, it is not true enough. 
More broadly, we come to think of Easter as a season in the church year, seven weeks of joy. And as true as that is, it is not true enough. Easter is a way of living. Easter is a way of hoping, a way of perceiving by faith God's involvement in our lives and in the life of the world. Resurrections, you see, are always happening. New life is Christ's continuing ministry in our midst. Lo, I am with you always. That's the promise Jesus left us with. And when Jesus is around, my death hasn't got a chance. As a father of four, three of them daughters, I can identify with Jairus. There any anguish greater for any parent? Any words more heartbreaking? My little daughter is dying. As a Jewish leader, Jairus had likely opposed Jesus, if not, to, if not face to face, then uh, with that tacit agreement and lockstep with those who challenged Jesus' identity and authority. And yet, Jairus spots Jesus getting out of the boat and pushing through the crowd. He throws himself at Jesus' feet and pleads. And there, there he finds mercy. There he finds a Savior willing to help. So for us as well, a Savior willing to help. A Savior who will come to us and with us when death, any kind of death, is the danger we face. Can you see the two of them now hurrying down the road, huh? trying to get to Jairus' house? The crowd moving in mass around them. Jairus has Jesus by the elbow, steering him, pushing people out of their way in a desperate hurry, you see, in a desperate race between life and death. And Jesus stops. Stops in his track, stops right in the middle of the road, stops and looks around. Who touched me? Jairus frantically tugging. There's no time for this. The disciples confused. Touched you? What do you mean, touched you? Of course people are touching you. Look at this mob. Everyone wants to pat your back, shake your hand, see you smile. And Jesus stands there, stands fast. Someone touched me. And a woman confesses. Now consider the setting. Was an era in which no woman would deliberately touch a man who was not her husband or her son. Such an action would subject her to the tattletale gossip of the whole village. Even so, she furtively sneaks up from behind, barely brushes his room. She, the giants. Yes. Bible translators are so, so polite. Even a little prudish. Mm -hmm. Suffering from hemorrhages. And literally in the Greek, it speaks of an unending 12-year menstrual flow. Constant time of month when she was considered unclean by the people around her. And so her plight, huh? socially ostracized, perpetually anemic, poverty stricken, chronically fatigued, what a curse. Huh? With one touch, she is healed. Her bleeding stops, says the translators. The Greek text is more, uh, more graphically poetic. Huh? It says, her fountain of blood dried up. Her fountain of blood dried up. What a relief for her. What a panic. What a panic for Jairus. 
Come on, Jesus, come on. We've no time. Let's go. Hurry now. Hurry. For God's sake, hurry. And catastrophe strikes. The messenger arrives with those most painful words. Her daughter is dead. Crushing words. Eviscerating words. Words that turn day into night, huh? And turn hope into a living hell. Your child is dead. Fear not, says Jesus. Fear not. Only believe. And to those who grieve, Jesus says, she's only sleeping. And take her by the hand. The Savior says, little girl, arise. Arise. It's the same root word as resurrection. Fear not. Only sleep. Those are words for us. Those are words for us today. Words of hope. Easter words. Twelve and twelve. The number in common connects these two events. Daughter and daughter. Those two titles connect these two events. Twelve years of sickness and a twelve-year-old girl. Both the same. The life-giving healing on the one hand and the death-defying on the miracle on the other, both the same. And in each case, there was waiting. And how we hate to wait upon the Lord's time. And yet how necessary that waiting is. For resurrection waits for just the right shattering moment to do its work in our lives. Chronic or critical? Death comes at us both ways. And in both ways, Christ is present to bring new life. Now, I am not a Pollyanna. My message is not, well, while you're waiting, just buck up buttercup. <laughs> I know, I know, Easter does not mark all of our moments. Death comes in a hundred forms and with a thousand faces. A careless interaction, never intending to hurt, but it does. Cutting words, meant to maim, and they do. Our hardships are very real. Chronic illness, which is invisible to others. Disappointments and broken hearts that run deep with pain. Shattered dreams feeling like shards of glass tearing at our spirit. I know something of those rough and rocky places of life, and I know you do too. But no matter how compelling no matter how overwhelming these Good Fridays are, they do not compose the whole of life. As true and as real as those experiences are, they are not the whole truth. Now I hope and pray 12 years of suffering never comes my way. But if it does, I pray that I will have ears to hear Jesus say, Faith saves. Go in peace. Be free. And I hope and pray even more that I will never hear the words giant spring. Your God is But if I do, if I do, I pray that I will also have ears to hear Jesus say, Fear not, only sleep. Arise.
I'm no Pollyanna. It's true. Good Fridays will inevitably come our way. And yet as true as that is, it is not true enough. Not when Jesus is present. For Christ comes with graceful hope and Easter light, willing to open every grave, willing to heal every hurt buried deep inside, willing to forgive every heart, willing to mend every broken fence. Reviving, renewing, refreshing, restoring, reconciling, all in God's good time. And even now, even now, Christ is here, moving among us, his hand extended, his lips whispering in our ears, my little child. The word for today, arise, for Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Amen. The hymn is on page six, Great is Thy Faithfulness, echoing our first lesson. Let's rise if you are comfortable and able, and we'll sing together.
be seated. Well, everybody except the cult of me. <laughs> Siblings in Christ, God has called us to a new time in our life as a church. It is a time for reflection and prayer, a time for self-examination and seeking, a time for expectation and hope. We need a shepherd to lead our flock. And God has promised that he will provide a shepherd for us. The following persons have been appointed and elected to serve as the call committee of our church. Ari, Dave, Janine, Guy, Bill, and Marilyn. Can you please come forward? Me for a minute here, right? I'm gonna get some promises out of here. Dear friends, you have been duly appointed to serve as the call committee for this congregation in order to seek a minister to shepherd and lead us. Yours is a spiritual endeavor on behalf of this congregation. Are you willing, therefore, to be open to the Spirit's leading and by prayer and holy conversation to undertake this calling to seek a shepherd for us? Yes, and I ask God to help and guide you. Will you be diligent in your seeking, careful in your listening, purposeful in your questioning, and respectful in all that you do. Yes, and I ask God to guide and help me. Will you seek God's guidance through the Holy Spirit and prayer, and in your deliberations with your fellow committee <coughs> members, until you are brought to one mind and one will in Christ, and have chosen God's shepherd for us? Yes, yes, and I ask God to help and guide me. Let us pray for those who are being installed today and for our church as we seek God's guidance through this special time. Almighty God, you alone are the great shepherd of the sheep, and we turn to you to lead and guide us in all things. As you have raised up faithful servants of your holy word, to tend to your flock in each time and place. Send us now, we pray, a faithful shepherd. Send us now, we pray, a faithful shepherd to lead our flock. Give us a holy patience in this time of our seeking, a patience that, a patience that trusts in you for our present care, knowing that you will bring our good work to fulfillment in your time. Bless those who are especially called to serve on the call committee. Give them the gifts they need to seek and find the minister of your own nurturing, that we might grow in faith and love and ministry. All these things we ask, O God, and whatever else we need, in the name of him who is the Good Shepherd, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. I now declare to you that you have been installed as the call committee of Christ Lutheran Church. May God bring your good work to fulfillment and grace in Christ's name. Amen. Let's give a hand for the Lord. Now you can turn As we have prayed for them today, I hope that you all will pray for them every day. Let us now profess our faith, the faith of the church. One more. I don't oh. worry. Um, the reason we have the call team ready is because we had a transition team who helped um, interview all of many of you anyway, and uh, you filled out the surveys, and they worked on the um, basically our church's resume, preparing it, and they did it. Um, 
They used the one that we had three years ago and polished that off and updated it uh, with the things we're doing today that makes us who we are today. And I wanted to uh, thank them because uh, they have now handed that off to the Synod as well as the call team. And that is Tom, Ann, and Tammy, please come up. A little something for you. I come to church more often if I know I can get stuff. Thank you so much. Well, 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 well. Thank you. found on page 7 of your worship bulletin. By the power of the Holy Spirit, we are bold to proclaim that I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, Suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body. And life everlasting. Amen. In communion with the saints and in the power of the Holy Spirit, we join our voices in prayer. God of abundance, you fill your church with a multitude of gifts. Sustain those among us who feel that they are not valued. We celebrate and give thanks for the amazing diversity that you have gift gifted us with, Lord God. We open our hearts and welcome into our ministry and community all who are seeking God's love and grace. Lord, in your mercy. You are our prayer. God of creation, your goodness abounds. Multiply the fruits of the earth and rescue it from our wastefulness. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of justice, you reign in steadfast love. Bring peace between nations ravaged by war or strife, especially Palestine and Israel, Ukraine and Africa. And illumine paths of justice and freedom for those who lead them. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of compassion, your touch brings healing, and your word revives us for life. Lord Jesus, you break down barriers. From your first meal at a tax collector's house to your last breath on the cross as the temple curtain was torn in two. Even in our uncleanness, Lord Jesus, we dare to touch the hem of your cloak and to live as a community that defines no one as an outsider. Hear our prayers for all who are in need, who remain now aloud or silently. Turn our mourning into dancing and our weeping into joy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of community, you gather us at your table of plenty where we welcome people of every race, age, gender expression, culture, sexual orientation, and gender identity, where we welcome people of all abilities and economic status. Where there is hunger among us, open our hands. Where we are indifferent to the needs of others, open our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Holy 
God, holy and merciful, into your outstretched arms we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray, trusting in the one who is the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Share a sign of peace with one another. God's peace be with you. 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 God's peace. If you'll find your seats, I'll call upon the ushers to receive tithes and offerings for this day. and in all places 
Give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who overcame the powers of death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection, opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Jesus Christ, we are offered new life. As we remember together, on the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And then again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The meal is prepared, and it is God who invites all of us to come and receive it. Here at Christ Lutheran, we have open communion. That means that everyone is welcome at the Lord's table, need not be a member of this congregation, need not be a member of any church, but if you believe, come and share the meal. We also uh, have gluten-free wafers, and we use uh, the uh, communion by intinction. That is, you'll receive a bit of the host, a bit of bread, and dip it in one of the chalices. The red is wine, and the golden is grape juice. It's your choice. And then if you know someone who needs to receive communion, please, don't let them, their spirit go hungry. Take communion with you and share it with them this week as part of our ministry here at Christ Union. So come, all things are good.
Friends, may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Let's pray. We thank you, generous God, for the refreshment we have received at your banquet table. Send us now to spread it, your generosity into all the world. To the one who is our dearest treasure, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. May the blessings of God who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us be upon you now and forever. Amen. Amen. I have something to say about the last hymn we're going to sing. One of my favorite authors, Maya Angelou, is an African American woman who wrote the poem for President's inaugural address. And she also wrote many other um, works and autobiographies, the first of which was titled, I Know Why the Caged Bird Sings. And in it, she describes her graduation ceremony in Stamps, Arkansas in the 1940s. And she describes it in her words here. Our assemblies followed the usual pattern, the American National Anthem, the Pledge of Allegiance, and then the song every black person I know called the Negro National Anthem. It was the poem written by James Dalden Johnson. It was the music composed by J. Rosalind Johnson. And it is the national song with which we will conclude our service. Number 841, Lift Every Voice and Sing.